President Trump is going all in. Last week's conviction didn't stop him from raising over $200 million in 72 hours. From attending the UFC fight in New Jersey to great fanfare. And from opening up a new TikTok account that has already gained more than 11 times the amount of followers than the number of followers gained by the Biden-Harris campaign. I'm very well aware of the issues facing that specific social media platform, but think about it from this angle. TikTok is the world of young people, and President Trump is destroying all the gay and other woke influencers that the Biden campaign has been busy paying for good publicity from with the youth vote. And Trump accomplished this after his conviction. And while we await word on the appeals process, sentencing is coming up very soon next month, unless it gets delayed. Over the weekend, Trump made it clear that if he has to undergo house arrest or even a stint in jail, he's ready for it. Like I said, he's going all in. Watch. The judge could decide to say, hey, house arrest or even jail. It could. could face it could. what that could look I'm like. okay with it. I saw one of my lawyers the other day on television saying, oh, no, you don't want to do that to the president. I said, don't, you don't beg for anything. You just, the way it is. At the same time, Donald Trump Jr., along with many other MAGA luminaries like Tucker Carlson and Florida Congressman Matt Gates, were all in attendance at the inauguration of Nayib Bukele for his second term as president, where Don Jr. and Bukele joked about how in El Salvador they lock up criminals and not political opponents, unlike in America. Again, who'd ever think we lived to see the day where the once extremely dangerous Latin American country has become less of a banana republic than we have? Watch. See you. Congratulations again. Incredible victory. Uh, and amazing accomplishments, actually. Thanks. And you do it all without having to jail your political opponents, which I loved in the speech yesterday. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> They're able to video because there's no more crime. Yeah. You don't have to throw them in jail. Yeah. Everyone wins, right? We're going to jail the opposition. <laughs> Thank you so much. Joining us now to discuss is Paul Cam and our counsel for the National Legal and Policy Center. Paul, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Great. So we used to be a country where we locked up criminals instead of political opponent, opponents, but it doesn't seem that's the case anymore. And President Trump is looking to work that to his advantage for November by asking his lawyers not to beg the judge to keep him out of jail or house arrest. He says the public would never stand for that if he was put behind bars. What are your thoughts on his strategy here? Well, uh, the sentencing hearing will be on July 11th, as you said. But before that, there will be a pre-sentence report by the probation office, and that uh, office will make a recommendation to Judge Bershon what the sentence should be. Uh, at, after the uh, defense counsel gets that, they will write their own recommendation to the court. And I got to believe that they're going to ask the judge for a probation. Uh, and then the prosecutor will go back and then give what uh, Alvin Bragg wants the judge to impose, and he'll probably ask for a jail sentence. But uh, I think, uh, you know, it's wise for his attorneys to say, look, don't put him in, in jail and, and put him on at best probation. No, definitely. But, you know, uh, I think President Trump, he's working his strengths right now and he's, you know, trying to show his base and even to other independents and others who may be open to voting for him this time around saying, hey, I'm not I'm not afraid of this. I'm ready for the fight. I'm up against a rigged system and I'm not backing down one iota. So I, I do see his angle there. And I like I like I was saying earlier, he's going all in. And so July 11th looks like the sentencing date as of right now, like you were saying. So that comes just four days before the RNC. Uh, but how how likely is it that July 11th remains as the sentencing date? Because for President Trump's team, when they filed their appeal, could they not ask the judge as well to just delay the sentencing and to push it back, given the appeals process? Well, uh, the, the sentencing has to come first before they can even file their notice of appeal. Now, they may try to file a motion in the meantime to say, hey, let's put this sentencing after uh, the RNC convention. But uh, the Attorneys did ask uh, uh, Judge Mershon after he was convicted to have a sentence in mid or late July. So they've already basically agreed to this date of July 11th. Uh, but in any event, I think they should have had this sentencing uh, at the end of this month or earlier to get the sentence over with. So that starts the appeal process.